the YouTube channel where I share tips, tricks, and information on how to build production-ready and enterprise applications, as well as business automations, by leveraging nothing but no-code and low-code platforms. In my last video, I shared how I create a simple user icon using nothing more than a text element in Bobble.io. If you haven't had a chance to view that, I'll post a link to that video in the upper corner of this video. In this video, I'm actually going to expand upon that and create a more enhanced or advanced icon displaying either the user's profile photo if they have one, or their initials. I will also display their first name in their icon as well. So if you recall, in the last video, we actually created this icon with the user's initials. I'm gonna expand upon that a little bit and use the way Facebook handles their user icon and the way Google uh, handles their icon and build something very similar. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing I need to do is actually create a group to handle the multiple elements that we're gonna have. So I'm sim simply gonna right click on the current icon. And I'm going to group this and I'm gonna put it in a row. Again, I'm using the new uh, responsive engine by Bubble. So since I'm gonna have two elements side by side, I'm gonna create a row. And I'm just gonna call this group my icon. So first thing I want to do just to start laying things out is within this group, I'm gonna add a text element. So I'll come up here, add a text element. Again, I'm just gonna put a static name for now uh, and really start using this just to do some styling. So I'm gonna to go to my layout. Obviously I wanna center this. I don't wanna make this fixed width. I'm gonna set my width to zero initially, but make sure that the width fits the content. I'm gonna do that same stuff with the height here, a minimum height of zero, but the height will uh, actually match the content. And then obviously I need to add a little bit of padding in between these. So I'm gonna put some left padding, let's say 10 on that. So let's go see what that does for us just right off the bat. Okay, cool. So now we've got a, uh, an icon with a name. Now obviously the name doesn't match the initials because I'm using static information in the name, but we'll fix all that. So let's go ahead and, and make sure that we're actually pulling the user's name. So we're gonna do current user's first name. Uh, let's see, well, also we're gonna go back to the styling of the group itself. And we're gonna do a few things here. If you recall, when I created this icon, I set the roundness to zero. So I'm gonna remove the styling on this group and I'm gonna do, or I'm sorry, I set it to 50. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna set the roundness to 50 to give me that curved effect on the corners. The next thing I'm going to do is set a, a border just to give it a little bit um, of a look. And I'm gonna set a real light gray color. So I'm gonna use something like along the lines of, uh, let's go somewhere in here and see what that does for us. So again, let's do a little preview. See what we've got. Okay, so that's looking better. Obviously I need to add some padding and things like that. So let's, uh, let's work on that right now. So I'm gonna to go to my icon here and I'm going to add a little bit of padding to the top. I don't need much. And the bottom. And instead of 10, which I had uh, previously, I'm gonna put uh, three since we're inside this element now. In the group itself, I do need to add some padding to the left. So let's go here and make sure we have enough space in between our other menu item. So I've got that. I need a little bit of padding on the right for this. Let's get it away from that edge so we'll see if 10 works. And I'm actually going to change my text color to the same color as this background. So let me copy that and go back up in here and I'll remove the style. And I'm gonna make the text color 
this, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller as well. Let's make it 14. Okay, and now let's see. Uh, let's see how we're looking. So yeah, so this is looking uh, looking really good. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add a little. I'm probably going to bold the text here, and I'm going to add a hover effect when I hover over this to change the uh, the background color of that. So first of all, let's go ahead and bold the name, and then um, let's work on again the group. And let's see. So the way I'm going to accomplish this is I'm going to set the um, background to a flat color, but I'm going to make it translucent. This way, I'll be able to change the um, I'll be able to change the background color with a conditional as well. So I'll go up into my conditionals, and I'll say when this group is hovered, let's change my background color, and I'm going to do just a super light gray here, just just enough to where you'll know um, it's been uh, it's been hovered. And of course, I need to put my transparency uh, up to to 100. Okay, so. I think this uh, this will be a decent little change. Let's see what we got. Let's see. Make sure we've got a. Oops. There we go. So now it's you can see just that little bit of change. So that's that's about all. I could probably make it a little bit lighter, but for now, we'll leave that alone. I want to I want to remove uh, the background color change on this icon though, like that we had in the uh, in the previous video. So let's just um, remove that condition all altogether. I'm also going to make this. I'm going to remove this condition. I'm going to make this always visible on page load, but in the group. I'm going to make sure that this um, is not initially visible, and so we'll collapse it if it's hidden. And then the condition here will be when the current user is logged in, then this element is visible. Okay, so that's the only time we want to show that. So this should still show since we're logged in as John Jones here. Okay. And then um, the last thing we want to do is I'm going to go back into that, um, into this icon. And let's see. Um, let's find it here. So here's our badge. And let's see. So I think what I'm going to do is let me let me see here I think I'm gonna copy yeah let me just copy this expression and then delete it and you'll see why because I want the initial actual content to be the user's profile photo if they have one so I'm gonna say the content is current users profile photo and I also want to uh, process that with uh, Google's built-in image processor uh, I think 50 will be good enough for this um, let's see I need to resize that Um, and let's make sure that it's as wide as our parent element so it, it collapses in, into the correct size. And then for the conditional, what we're going to say is when current user's profile photo is empty, we want the text to be our expression. Oops, I guess I didn't copy it last time. So we want the text to be our expression, which is current users, first name, truncated to one. And if you if you don't if you didn't watch the previous video, what this does is just pull the first letter of the first name. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Current users, last name, truncated to one. And that should give us our initials. Okay, so let's see if we've got any changes here. We do not, but actually what I forgot to do is, um, so this user does not have a profile image. I know that. So if you see the text is actually there, but what I didn't do is um, uh, the background color of the text icon. So I also need to say the background color, let's see needs to be this and make sure transparency is set all the way to 100 and actually I noticed there was actually a space between these I don't want a space between them uh, now let's see what we got there we go so now we're back to what we had previously name as well as the initials and a little hover effect. Now if I go in and I run it as a user that has a profile photo, let's see if our photo shows up here. So there you go. So effectively what we've done is create a nice little user badge uh, similar to what you see uh, on Facebook. And we've done it just using text elements in Bubble. So I hope you found this video helpful. Again, in 2022, I'm planning on on publishing a lot more content like this to the channel. So if this is something you find useful and would like to see more, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to be alerted, and share the channel with others that you think could benefit from this. Thanks so much and happy no coding.